All right, let's get started. I wish it really went this fast. All right, I'm just doing a lay-in here. And uh, I'm using a big fan brush, which is by far the most professional brush there is. Every artist will agree that if you want to look cool among a peer group of other artists, you want to whip out a fan brush. No, not necessarily. <laughs> Fan brushes are kind of looked down upon somewhat, I don't know, they're a little bit silly, but I would say there's really no foundation for that. They're pretty helpful brushes. And uh, I'll sometimes use them for my lay-in or my wash just because, yeah, they're <laughs> kind of chaotic and full of all kinds of texture. And you can just get a lot out of them that you weren't expecting. And... Uh, that will bring me to a later point, which is about how difficult it is to get spontaneous brush strokes that you, you don't necessarily intend to get and what kind of a, a blessing those are. So for me, the fan brush is just a way to uh, go about a very analytical process, the drawing, with somewhat of a more loose approach. Because while I'm drawing, I'm using a brush that kind of has all kinds of strange angles. In, in, especially my fan brush, because it's, it's got a bunch of like chunks out of it. So it does all kinds of weird, uh, weird marks. But anyway, I like using it. So I'm kind of, I'm doing a rough lay in here. And I have this inability to fully plan out my paintings uh, to a fault. And sometimes it works out for me. And at those times, my ego says, see, you were a genius all along. You don't need to plan out anything. But uh, it's probably not a great habit. I've got a lot of friends who are more uh, methodical about their approach. And I'm always jealous of the outcome. Because <laughs> uh, m while some of my paintings will turn out fine and as I intended, sometimes I'm just searching for 75% of the time. And that's not very productive. So in this painting, um, I wanted to really go with some wild mark making and some kind of cool uh, washes that would show through. So I did a little bit of drawing off of my reference photo, but not enough probably. That was my main critique for this painting for myself. And God knows I'm my worst critic. So I jumped into it a little quickly here, but it was all working out kind of getting the proportions. Um, you know, I'm, I'm never too much of a slave to my reference. Uh, I want to get the, the feeling of color. Here's a little preview. I'm going to do a couple of these throughout the process. Yeah, that would be kind of my general block in. Uh, I'm never a slave to the reference as far as like, I don't know, the, the anatomy too much. It, it just depends. But all I know is that the, the painting itself will stand apart from the subject and the reference that it's painting painted from so you know people aren't going to be looking at them side by side saying like wow he did a really good job at copying that exactly how it was that's that's not my goal that's not most artists goals and uh, if that's how you think then uh, maybe you should rethink what you're looking for in art <laughs> but yeah for me i'm just trying to get the mood the color temperatures um you know, and, and various other things, but if the face looks like a face, naturally, I can be happy with that. It doesn't have to look exactly like my uh, model or reference photo's face. But in this, I was running into problems, because from this angle, you can already see, like, the, uh, the chin is jetting out a little bit too much. Of course, you know, I'm shooting this at like a 45 degree angle with my camera and it's a lower 45 degree angle so you're going to get all kinds of perspective distortions from the camera's point of view unfortunately but um, it's no lie that that the chin is jutting out a little bit too much and the forehead is a little bit too elongated but spoiler alert I'm going to fix that later. So when I do washes I mean um, I always try to keep it relatively thin because uh, it's going to dry quicker being that it's mixed with turpentine or mineral spirits and uh, it's going to allow me to do layers, subsequent layers over that 
and around that without it muddying up and blending too much. Like by the time I start to paint thicker, more opaquely, that will all be completely dry and uh, ready for additional layers. You just saw me in the camera frame chewing like a rabbit. Man, it's so funny. When you hear people say, like, oh, you make funny facial expressions when you're drawing or painting, you're like, no, I don't. And even if I do, it's only once in a while when I'm contemplating something. Nope. It's all the time. There there it was again. Little rabbit chewing my cud. <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, I'm just getting that wash. And it, these are just general local colors. I'm squinting, of course, at my reference photo. And I'm saying, you know, to, for me, it all depends on the temperament of each artist. But for me, I'm going, okay, there's kind of an intuitive perception of these colors in the cheek, in the forehead, in the face. And uh, I want to get them in just so when I start to add more opaque layers on top of it, they kind of shine through. Um, which, which goes to say, like, it's easier... I feel it's easier and better to start with uh, warmer tones in your wash because you're, uh, you're, the tones and opaque strokes you start to lay over top of that are likely going to include white. And in this case, they're definitely going to include white because there's, there's very pale colors in this reference photo. And the minute you start to add white to any color, whether it's, you know, something very warm in temperature like uh, cadmium orange or, you know, cad red or something, no matter what, by adding white, it's going to dull it and desaturate it. Every color, any color, adding white. And there are very few colors uh, in a painting that you are going to add uh, without a little bit of white in them. Most of them will have a dab of white. Um, to, to kind of correct the tint. So as you continue to paint, you know, things are gradually going to get cooler. There's nothing wrong with that. That's like the natural progression of things. But it's just interesting to keep in mind because you can always keep your washes a little bit warmer and thinner because, you know, if you're going to do a cadmium red wash or something of that matter, you know, you can mix colors together, but you don't mix white in your washes very often, at least I don't, because I, they're so thin and the translucency is allowing the white of the canvas to show through. So you kind of control your tonality by how thin your wash is and you use your paper towel. I use my paper towel to wipe it back and all that to kind of get the relative uh, value correct. <laughs> And then, as you see here, I'm starting to add thicker strokes on top of it. And naturally, I'm going over those undertones, but I'm trying to let my brush strokes leave little bits and hints of that translucent paint shining through all the way to the end, because that will really give the feeling of, of skin, uh, that translucency of skin. If you've ever shined a flashlight through your finger, you'll see that you kind of get all the, the red warms of your blood vessels and, and the glow of your skin tone and all that. So not to say that the light is going all the way through her face, but I think the term is called surface scattering, where light will go in at a uh, acute angle and kind of show through to the other side. And not to mention, she's probably wearing rouge and other things to give her that kind of warm cheek. But uh, it's probably not visible in the video. Maybe I'll do a close-up in the end of the final painting. But I'm trying to implement things like that in the nostril, where you really are getting a glow from the light on the other side of the face, shining through the thin skin of the, of the is it the septum or the philtrum between the, between the nostrils. And that skin is very thin and very translucent. It's just like when someone is backlit and their ear becomes this bright, bright uh, pink magenta kind of color. That's obviously because their ear, the cartilage in the ear is very thin and the light 
can travel through it and when it does it picks up all the warmth of the blood vessels and stuff so anyway that's a long way of saying I'm trying to leave some of that those translucent warm colors just to give a little uh, interest to the skin tones and like I said before this is a this was a reference photo that I basically picked because it was full of these kind of gorgeous muted grays which is something I'm not uh, <laughs> I'm not trying to sound condescending but yeah it's something that after a while you begin to appreciate more and more and more uh, most you know experienced artists will say like a painting with muted grays is is s subtle grays and stuff is some of the most poetic and uh, kind of the beauty of that is is a lot more difficult than than most people think um, and it's just really lovely because since they're all kind of in the same gray value range the colors really harmonize quite well and that's um that's somewhat of a, a deceptive and ambiguous term like gray itself um, you don't have to think of gray so much as variations of black with a little bit of white mixed in but more so a very muted versions of the colors you're using starting to do the fun parts here adding a little more highlights I probably should have been talking about adding the rim light the rim light is important in this case I mean in any case it's it's pretty important to get your lightest light and your darkest dark in there I've heard a lot of people say they like doing that as quick as possible um, it's kind of like eating your dessert before your vegetables but I've heard it argued that it's very important for the relative nature of your painting and uh, I really agree with that yeah sometimes you cannot see the tones in between accurately until you've seen the darkest dark and the lightest light and then you have a spectrum in between Yes, when I look at it in this light, the color, the musculature, it really is beautiful. Oh, no, 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 not, not that, not that, that. Oh, yeah, sorry about that, Mr. Tarantino. Anyway, here we are the next day. Uh, this painting is 24 by 24, and these are some kind of closing thoughts, which aren't, aren't really closing thoughts because... I likely will do a little bit more on it, but um, yeah, for the most part it's finished. A few things I might play with is um, just getting a more homogenous tone for the background, playing with those ribbons on the shoulder a little bit, and um, the nose is a little angular at some points, but uh, for the most part I was really kind of setting out to achieve. Uh, a nice harmony in the skim tones and on camera it's frustrating because on camera when I was taking pictures of it last night and even looking at it now like the camera wants to really separate those tones a lot more than I can see in person which is fine there's a lot of there's a lot of problems with uh, cameras and taking photos of your paintings but uh, it just makes me a little more painfully aware of things I'm not in love with in the painting um, but yeah, like the, the cheek, uh, the delineation between those kind of paint strokes of the, the greenish color and the pink and the, the cool lit upper side of the cheek, those aren't as clearly delineated in person as they are on camera. So I don't know, maybe I'll play with that kind of thing. But overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, I don't do a whole lot of oil painted portraits. Uh, so it's, uh, it's been kind of fun lately. I've been, uh, I've been watching this show on YouTube, which has been going on for like six or seven years, called the Portrait Artist of the Year, and uh, they you can find it occasionally on YouTube, or you, you have to search for it on Facebook groups called, uh, there's a Facebook group called Art Lovers, and if you join that group, you can have access to all six or seven seasons of the show. Anyway, it's a super fun show, it's like, uh, it's a competition show in the UK, uh, for portrait painters and um, a couple of my friends and I have watched it and 
it, there's a lot to be learned from it. Uh, I don't know. It some some of the episodes are kind of cheesy, being that it's British. It's like a lot more relaxed, and uh, the humor is pretty, pretty, pretty funny, dry and ridiculous. But it's not so sensational. Uh, it's not like an American reality show or game show or something. It's like they're trying to take themselves seriously but it ends up being just kind of quaint and and sweet and uh some of the artists are incredible um and the judges although after six seasons of it you you really start to question what their thoughts are about art because they they seem to kind of say the same things over and over i can't fault them for that though because um i'd probably do the same after that long but anyway you start to disagree with them and um, through that challenge of hearing them uh, describe the qualities about the paintings they usually choose for winners and whatnot I have got to say I have really learned a lot because they've they, they've kind of they've kind of helped me come around to side with them about the qualities anyway that's a that's a long way of just saying I've been watching a lot of portrait paintings so it's gotten me a little more fascinated about uh, doing some portraits here and there and playing with it. So this one was just a fun experimentation and uh, I really love um, when a, when um, the, the colors are super harmonious, you know, because of, a, because of a lighting situation or something like that. So this reference photo I had was really challenging um, and interesting because the skin tone was obviously backlit, so you're getting all the painted side of the face in shadow. And uh, in that, everything becomes tonally very, very similar and homogenous. And so you're just looking for these subtle shifts in color temperature in order to show um, interest and um, delineation and brush strokes and stuff. So I don't know. I enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun. I hope you like it. Here's a quick close-up. The sunlight is kind of showing through it right now, which is cool because it, it shows you where the thinnest areas of the paintings are. I will probably play with it for another half an hour, and then maybe I will paint, uh, post the painting <laughs> if I don't ruin it. Some nice thick brush strokes. Some nice thin areas. Anyway, hope you like it.